Friday night, uh, May 11, 2018. Moose Girl will be calling in momentarily, I am sure. But uh, welcome to everybody out there in the various places. Hopefully you uh, hung around long enough to get tuned in to the program. We are live on freedomsnetwork.com and on rlmradio.xyz and on tunein.com and on the internetradio.com and, of course, on the reallibertymedia.com page on the Freakers Ball show page. Welcome, Miss Girl. Yes, indeed. Hey. Hey. How's it going? Oh, it's going, I guess. <laughs> Good. Yeah, well, you know, it happened, man. It, it, you know, it, it does, and, and, it, and it seems to happen always. Right it's when you're ready, right when you're ready to go to air, it, it happens. Oh, I know. It, there's never any good timing, but it always <laughs> seems to happen at the worst time possible. Uh, man, I, I, I tell you, it's it's crazy, but uh, it just and just the most minor little thing, and 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 I and I and I still don't. I I had to switch to something else because. Wow. Um. <sighs> earlier this week, I had a problem when, when my. It, and it took my computer like a real long time to shut down. Yeah. And then when it came back up, when I when I booted back up, um, my KVIRC was broken. It, it was like it it didn't recognize nothing. Wow. Okay, fine, great. I have a backup of all my of uh, all my configurations for KVIRC. Right, right. It wouldn't take them. It wouldn't take wow. them at all. And and so I said, all right, fine. I went through KVIRC and I reset everything back up. Well. Yeah. To a degree. I, I wasn't completely finished with it, but I, I spent several hours getting it back to where it should be. And then and then later on, a uh, day later or something, I had the same problem. It happened again, and KVIC was screwed again. I said, fine, let's just try a different client. And and so I wanted something that I could use in, in the same manner as far as scripting goes. Um, for that, and uh, so I went through Hex Chat. I went through Ice Chat, two two different versions of Ice Chat, as it was highly recommended to me. Um, and uh, none of them would do exactly what I want. So I said, "Fine, fuck it. I'll just use Merc. I, I can use Merc. Merc's great." And so I went through it. I've been spending the last day or two setting up Merc perfectly to the way I wanted it. Well, I was kind of goofing around with some settings earlier, and I, I didn't really think anything too serious about it, just kind of changing some various things around, and um, so just before the show there, I don't know if you see, you know, I, I logged out of IRC, and when I go to restart the Merc, it wouldn't, it wouldn't start, it'd come up and the little circles just spin there, and yeah. it would never get to the little connect thing. <laughs> That happened to me at work today. And, and so I, I tried all kinds. my computer. I tried all kinds weird. of different things, uh, messing with the. the mm -hmm. It's something in the any file. Uh, Mark had used a little any file, and mm. uh, it wouldn't do it. I tried to reinstall it, and that didn't work. And oh god, well it, it's just been a, so. Anyway, right now I'm on Ice Chat Nine here, which I had kind of set up uh, to to do what I needed to do. <laughs> Anyway, other than that, <laughs> wow, no, that's weird. I mean, I knew it was technical problems. I'm just like, okay, yeah, you know, but I've you, been there. You know, the only I've technical been there. problem. I know how it is. Yeah, you know, the only technical problem is with my IRC client, and and weird. it's just like, really? That's weird. <laughs> it's one of the most simplest programs in the world. And right. <laughs> weird. Anyway. But isn't it controlled like by someone else writes the code or whatever, right? No, it was all mine. I, I mean, you know, well, I mean, the, the normal the program is written by somebody. Something else. must have got messed with or changed or something. I know. I, I, it was something I did. It was it was it was a, a setting oh, okay. I made. Some setting I made, and I'll have to go through it. Uh, oh, okay. Tomorrow, I guess, 
and, and work on it line by line, going through that 80 file. And see so, where it is. Yeah, now. because and it's only, you know, like a thousand lines. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully you find it right away. <laughs> yeah, with any luck. Uh, anyway, so how the hell are you doing? <laughs> you know, I'm I'm still here, thankfully. You're, you know, knock on wood. And um, yeah, you know, we made it through another week, and um, glad it's the weekend. But I have to go to work for a little bit tomorrow, but only for like an hour or something. Yeah. I had to go to the dentist this week, so I had to leave early one day. So. Make up time, but other than that, I'm good. That's good. Yeah. Um, the boys are going to be 18 next week. Wow. Yeah. Um, that's coming up. Their graduation's coming up. It's just like, it's going to be a whole whirlwind for like a month here. All this stuff happening all at once. Yeah, but they got through their major thing in English. That's done. But they still have some finals coming up, but, you know... Um, I think they're okay. Yeah. <laughs> so we're good. That's good. Yeah, and then they're going to be starting their lives. They're 18 next week, like I said, you know. Yep, you turn 18 and, and your first So day. that's like, I'm having a beer. You're I'm only like, okay. You, you're only, Go ahead. Yeah. You know, he's going to yeah. be in his dad, so that's right. fine with me. <laughs> <laughs> I it, mean, think it, about it, though, Graham. 18... To me, if you're able to go into the military at 18, and you're able to smoke cigarettes when you're 18, and you're able to vote when you're 18, and you have they force you to sign up for the military at 18, not technically, but they force you to sign up for selective service, you should be able now, to wait, have a I heard here. something, by the way, I heard something you on know, that. No, come on. I, no, I, I, mean, I, I, I was you, 19 you, when I was I, I, I heard that well, you have... Until you're 26. No. See, no. This isn't right. I mean, okay. Like the, Zach just told me tonight about someone he knows that at the homecoming dance this year, a girl at the other, the other public school, high school, yeah. had to be taken to the hospital because she OD'd on alcohol. So you know they're drinking when they're under 18. You know they're drinking be, when they're yeah, between sure. 18 and 21. You send these kids to college at 18 years old, and there's other kids there that are 21. So you know your 18 year old is going to be drinking at oh, college. Oh, no question. Yeah. I mean, come on. I mean, so you you were 18, 18 once, so he's like, I'm going to have a beer. I'm like, you're going to be up your dad's, your dad's, and he's like, Dad, I already told Dad. You know, I'm like, okay, you know, yeah, have at it, whatever, you know, right, it's like. Because I told them, because what happens is, if you don't drink, and all of a sudden you do, and you put drink too much, you could actually OD on it. Well, you don't, well, well, wait, you've never done wait. It before. He said he was going to have a beer. Yeah, I'm like, oh yeah, right. You're gonna have one beer. Oh, I might have a couple more than that. Yeah, <laughs> you will. But anyway, yeah. on the selective service thing, I heard that they have until they're 26. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, see, I haven't heard that. Because when I filled out the financial aid forms, which is a federal form, Grim. Right. They have a thing right on there. Your kid, your son will be, or your child will be 18 you know, at the time of this, you know, do you want us to just register for selective service? I'm just like, check it. Oh. Because they do. I thought it was 18. I mean. Well, it, it's and, it's between, you know, when the day you turn 18 and the day you turn 26. Yeah, I, Appar apparently, me, apparently, I was 18 because they actually sent a letter out to the boys like six months ago. Yeah, well, yeah. Sister, saying, "Reminder, you're required to register with the, you know, blah blah blah." Yes. Yeah. the service. And it, it, I was just like, "Fuck me!" You know, I was. I mean, I'm. I don't like it. I don't like the idea of a draft. And that's it, because I'm from the era of Vietnam, okay? When I was born, Vietnam was going on. And okay, I hate I had, to do this, I but I, I hate to do that. Uncles of mine were over there. They were in the military at the time. They were there. Okay, I, my, I, like I said, you know, I hate to do I this. And I had other family members that were 
<laughs> involved in the military at that time. Uh, I said, I said, I hate to do this, but I'm, but I'm going to uh, post in a government website link to the channel. That's okay. <laughs> you don't have to apologize. You know, we we we're here to share information. So, um, so but there anyway, it is. I mean, there, 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 there. Vietnam, ugh, I just, I'm, I'm just, what they did to those guys. Okay, if you were in college, you wouldn't get drafted. Back in the Vietnam when they when. We went to war in Vietnam. When America went to war in Vietnam. Right. If you were in college, you did not have to sign up. But if you weren't, you did. So, to me, that's fucking bullshit. Okay, anyway, right there on that page. Most, most people that went to college at that time, they had more money than the poor people that couldn't afford college, right? But there's nothing wrong with working in a trade. But back then, it was looked down upon. Like back then, you were you were looked up, looked highly upon if you wore a suit, worked for IBM or something. Right. You know, if you were just some tradesperson, electrician or whatever, or a steel worker, you would look down upon. Which no reason for that. Even garbage workers in New York City, that's a good job now. Right. You know what I mean? But back in the day, they were doing shit work and getting shit pay on top of it. It's like, fuck that. Okay, anyway, Moose, well, right there, it, it says it says uh, on that page that 18 through 25, so they could wait, wait until the last day they're 25. Right. To, uh, but. To sign true. up. Which could, you know, mean the difference between never going. <laughs> I doubt that, but whatever. <laughs> you never know. You know, it depends on if they actually had a draft. Maybe it would be over by by that time. I mean, but if you think back, the, the draft that I can remember, and from what I okay, from what I understand from World War Two, is like guys were just signing up. They did. They didn't have have to have a draft because guys were just signing up after December seventh, nineteen forty two. Guys were signing up because that was looked upon as an attack on America. Right, right. On America, America, it hit Hawaii, right? Yeah. Which they knew it was coming ahead of time, but that's another story. Exactly. Right. Sure. The, the thing is, it happened, and so that prompted all these guys out there, the younger men of the time, fifteen to fucking. Uh, on up, age 15 on up, it prompted, and they were encouraging people to sign up for the, to go and be a part of this, help us out. Oh, right, yeah. The propaganda with the billboards and everything, we need you, we want you. Yeah, well, you, you know, know, they had a big influx after 9-11, too. Right, and it was the same propaganda, just a different little take on it, but pretty much the same propaganda. I mean, right, absolutely. We want you, we need you, you have to do this you know, to help us out, you know, help these people. Sure. You know, and it's just when you see that, and then I grew up, when I was born, Vietnam was going on, and unbeknownst to me, because I was a fucking baby, you know, I mean, yeah, um, I didn't know what was going on. I was mm -hmm. a baby, you know. Um, my dad was in the military, two uncles were in the military during that time. And it just affects me greatly. And I've seen documentaries on it. I've watched it. I know the whole history of this freaking thing. Um, World War Two. I'm pretty knowledgeable. But when it comes to... It was so long. It, Vietnam was long. But World War Two was, like, insanely long. It's like, you can't know every little thing. You know what I mean? Right. You, But you can know a lot of it. But it takes so long to research it. You know what I mean? There's so many fucking things to know. Yeah. Same with the Vietnam War, though, but the best um, documentary I've seen on the Vietnam War recently is the Ken Burns Vietnam documentary that aired on PBS, and they show really trippy stuff. Like, I've talked about this on this show before, but I just want to get this information out there. If you have not seen that documentary, please watch it. Please do. It's long. It's in parts. So you can watch it little by little. <laughs> yeah. But to me, it was mesmerizing. I mean, 
and at the same time, it evoked an emotional response out of me, which was anger <laughs> and heartbreak um, at times. But it just it pisses you off on the inside. It just makes you feel like, you know, sometimes I'm pissed off and I just have to, like, not think about it because it just, I feel like there's, me being pissed off isn't the right thing to be, like, about something. You know what I mean? Yeah, sure. The moment. Like, you have to pick what emotion you want to have, you know? Sure. But watching that video, that documentary really, it, it stirred up emotional responses in me. And you wouldn't believe, when you look at the footage that they show, which is actual footage of the news, like CNN like or ABC, Mm-hmm. They actually showed real crap. They were right there. But nowadays, you can see that they've, they've censored it out. And they're like, oh, we can't show that on TV anymore. Like, they used to actually show the coffins with the flags draped upon them. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Now they don't do that anymore. They don't show you that anymore. No, because they're shipping the heroin back in all those coffins. Yeah, it's been so dumbed down and so deluded and so, like, the media is not, like, the mainstream media, they are not trustworthy at all. You, you have to know this. I mean, well, uh, to me, to me, can't to, to, to me, the best, the, best, uh, the best documentary on Vietnam was Full Metal Jacket. <laughs> I like that movie a lot. I, I, I know it's not technically a documentary, but I think you get a lot more truth out of that than any... any... Oh, that's, no, but you haven't seen the Ken Burns one yet. I mean, yeah, they, I know, but... It's not just for one side. It's not a government propaganda documentary at all. Like, they have actually... He interviewed soldiers from the Vietnam side. I mean, it, it's not a one-sided documentary. That's what I want to stress very much, because people are like, oh, it's about Vietnam. Oh, it's on PBS. Oh, so it's going to be the same old shit we heard. It's like, no, it's more than what you've heard before. That's why I keep promoting it. Yeah. That's why I keep talking about it, because it's it, part of it, just for the sheer fact of the history of it, the footage that you will see, yeah. you have not seen before. You know, mm-hmm. and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And just like I was talking about that, um, the, the documentary about the UFO guy, Robert D. Same thing. The pictures that he shows, you have not seen that before. And to me, you know, and you have to decide for yourself if it's real or not real. I mean, I can't do that for you. Sure. But just see it. Just to make your own decision and come to your own conclusion. I mean, I'm just recommending these things just because I think certain people would like it, you know. But right. No, I understand. And, and I know you really and you really uh, got stuff out of it. So, uh, But as Juana Taco points out there in the chat that Burns glossed over the Gulf of Tonkin incident. Um, yeah, a little bit. He did gloss over it, but at the same time, it wasn't about that. He didn't want to make it just about that. It was about the whole war. No, I know. Like, but it, you know, there are very good documentaries about just you, the Gulf of Tonkin. If you miss the uh, if you miss the reason for getting in, that, that's a pretty. I, that's, no, that's, that's he a pretty, touches on that. They touch on that. They, they touch on the reasons for getting in. They they don't pull no punches. They're like you know they're telling the truth. You know. And not exactly 100%, probably. But the way that it's done, I thought it wasn't one-sided at all. Okay, cool. You know what I mean? It wasn't so well, USA. You know, if I, it if I ever get an opportunity, you know, maybe I'll take it, check it out. But Just to see, the see to me, Grim, I'm a history buff, and just to see some of those old pictures and some of that old news footage. Like I said, I was, it, it, I was born in 66. This, you know, I've never, you know, I need to, I like to see this stuff because I'm a history buff, whatever. It was going on at the time of my birth. You know, maybe that's why I'm obsessed with it. And the fact that I have three relatives involved in it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cool. I'm cool, cool. To, yeah, cool. but anyway. Well, yeah. Okay, now I have a couple stories that I did book uh, All right, well, let's get to some music here. We're already running late. You yeah, let's yet? do music first, and then we'll come back, and we will talk about other crafts. It is the Freaker's Ball. It's Friday. Time to let loose at the week, you know? This has never been a show meant to be anything, really. It's just meant to be a Freaker's Ball. That's what we That's it. right. It's and awesome. it is. Because it is. It's a fucking freaky, dicky show that we do every Friday.
party <laughs> to entertain all you people. Or try to. Right. Or maybe piss you off. Probably piss you off. I don't know. I know I piss people off, but, you know, that's what happens when you put yourself out there. Like, I could just be not doing this show for the last nine years. And Good. just be in the shadows just lurking or talking in a chat room and not putting myself out there. And I realize that when I put myself out there, I subject myself to ridicule. I'm putting myself out there. So that means I'm going to have rid a lot of critics. Sure, sure. And, you know, you got to pretty much have a thick skin when you do this type of thing. So that's all I'm saying. <laughs> Enjoy. All right. This is uh, Rob Zombie Ramon. Damn right, we're an American band. <laughs> Give it to your town, help you party it down. American Band Grand Funk Railroad. Uh, before that, uh, the title says Jeff Beck, Jimmy Page, and Flea with Metallica. But there were a whole lot more in there, uh, a, lot, a whole lot more people in that particular video uh, doing uh, Train Kept a Rolling. And we kicked it off with Rob Zombie covering the Ramones' Blitzkrieg Bop. Yes, indeedy. <laughs> oh, I feel a little better now after listening to all that. That's some, that's some good tunage there. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so, Moose, you there? Moose girl. Moose girl. Moose girl. Yes, you're calling my name. Yes, I hear you. <laughs> yes, I'm here. I was just chatting. Um, I do like bluegrass music. That is my favorite kind of music. She Same. does. Okay, I, I, I can verify that she likes bluegrass music. I do. I love it, actually. Not like it. I love it. <laughs> and senior songwriters and all kinds of other music, too. Okay, yeah. you know what you're saying? What? What were you saying? Was I saying something? Before I got in here. I was... I forget now. Did you ask me a question? I, I don't know. Did I? I don't know. <laughs> uh, roll back the tape there, barman. Hey, Let no me see. worries. It's all good. <laughs> roll, roll back the tape, barman. Tell me what I said. So Don is in Iowa. Don is in it, Iowa. I'm from Minnesota, right? And so Minnesota, I got in the Big Ten. Yeah. So Iowa and Minnesota, as far as rivalry with the universities, has always been a big thing. You yeah. know, like the University of Iowa, they, they've always had really good football teams, right? If you say so. And this, they're part of the Big Ten. So I grew up in Minnesota, so I was always with the Gophers. And um, he's in Iowa now. And in Minnesota, we call Iowa, it stands for idiots all walking around. <laughs> that's our little nickname for Iowa from Minnesota. Uh, that's a good one. I like it. I mean, it, you know, and, and it, it's just, it was a, it's been a rivalry. So it's like, they come up with phrases like this. You know what I mean? Sure, sure. It's like back in the 80s or whatever, you know, or 90s, you yeah. know? We were like, okay, we're gonna we're gonna rip on you as much as we fucking can. You know what I mean? Lover of grass. Yep. Oh yeah, I like grass. In general, I in grass, general, actually. What? I said in general. Yeah, in general, grass is good. <laughs> Although I just do not like people that are anal about their lawns. Like, I am not. I don't care. Like. If my lawn has dandelions or it has crabgrass or it has other things, they call weeds. I don't care. Right. We mow it, you know, every day. Every we mow it, and we don't like let it grow like you know out of control or anything. But we mow it. Yeah. And it's like that's all we do, and it's green. We had some dandelions out in the front the other day. I'm like, oh cool, there's dandelions. You know, like I don't look at dandelions as a bad thing. Sure. You know, I'm I'm a weird like my kids would say I'm fucking weird. They call me that every day. That's their new thing to say to me every day is that I'm weird. 
Which, I'm like, okay, whatever, I know that you're weird, I get it, you know? That you think I'm weird. <laughs> and it's like, my, one of my comebacks is, well, if I'm weird, that makes you weird because you're a product of me. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so you can't get out of it, you know? You're stuck, dude. You're, you're just as weird as fucking me, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, have, yeah. you know, make fun of it all you want, but that's where you're at. <laughs> yeah, man. Exactly. You're at, you know, you're at where you're at. <laughs> you are what you is. Right, but I feel that I've been a better, not better, I hate that word better, by the way, but I feel that even though I've been, like, a kind of eccentric parent, that I think that's going to get me places, you know what I mean? It's like, I've, oh, I, sure. I, I, yeah. I haven't, you know, I think they're going to fake me in the long run. That's what I'm hoping oh, for. Oh, of course they will. Knock on fucking wood. They may be 35 right. by the time they do it, but yeah. Right, right. I can wait. I can wait until then. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. I mean, they might not know it now, but, you know, they'll they call me weird every day now. I'll be like, <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry we called you weird every day, Mom. <laughs> no, I don't know what they're going to say. All right. <laughs> but, you know what I mean? God. Yeah. So you, it's so, the teenage, you know what I mean? Sure, I don't know. Sure. It's the whole adult thing. Now they're adult. They're going to be 18 next week. Yeah. So that means, Graham, that, you know, it's been 18 years since I've, you know, it was, you know, since I had them. I know. Yeah. And I look back on some pictures because I'm, like, getting ready for the graduation party and, like, pulling out these old, like, baby pictures of them. I'm just like, oh, my fucking God. Freaking out. <laughs> right. Funny. No. It's just crazy how fast it goes, though. Like, there's people having babies at work, and it's just like... Yeah, well, that, when, 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 uh... It goes when, super when, fast. You don't you know, think it when, goes at the time, but it does. It's like a blip. When you and I first talked here on the IRC, and... Yep. Uh, they were eight years old. Yep. And now it's ten years later. Yep. I remember yeah. them, like little these little bratty boys. Yep, that were in baseball, <laughs> and oh god, now I see kids dressed in baseball outfits. I'm like, oh, I remember those days. <laughs> but it goes by like a blip. Like at the time, it goes. It seems like it's going slow. Yeah. But then when all of a sudden you turn around, they're fucking eighteen almost, and you're just like, oh my fucking god, really? No doubt. No doubt. It's weird. It's weird. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but I'm happy. I mean, I'm glad, you know. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, I mean, it's good. It's good for them. I mean, they're getting on with their lives now, you know. Yep. Pretty soon yep. you'll be a grandma. Oh, God. Don't go there yet. Gra Gra Grammy, Grammy Moose. Don't go there yet. <laughs> <laughs> it won't be long I mean, yet. Like, whatever, like you said. I'll be all good yeah, forever, you know. but it's like, not so soon. You know, yeah. give it about five years or something. You know, at yeah. least. Right, it's best if they get get through whatever education they're going to get. And then, right, right, because that know. complicates stuff. You know, you have an unplanned pregnancy or something, and that's not good. Well, who you know, I mean, it's not always bad, but you know what I mean? No, nobody just, said it was going to be unplanned. It puts a wrench into everything. It makes <laughs> you have to adjust your plans. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's all I'm saying. It's not a bad thing. Uh, no, no, frumpy, frumpy. You know. Not from a passionate... Uh, but not Frumpy, not not from a passionate night on the couch, but from a passionate night in uh, Pinto. <laughs> Pinto? What, what was that car? The Miata? No, whatever car you were in when you conceived. Oh, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> it was a... Okay, this is back in 2000. Right? Yeah. It was a Honda Civic. A Civic. <laughs> in 2000, though. And so it was probably like a 1998 Civic or something. <laughs> it might have been a 1999 or a 2002. I don't know. I can't remember the make and model. I mean, the make and model, remember, but the year, no. So but just, it was a smaller car. So just remember, if you do it in a, in a Honda, you're probably going to wind up with twins. No, no, don't get that started. No, it doesn't matter if it's hot. It doesn't matter what kind of car it is. That's, no, no. It's, 
No. Oh, God. If you fuck somebody and get them pregnant, there could be odds that there's it's twins. It's a multiple pregnancy. Just yeah. keep that. Yeah, that's probably like what one in ten, and one in twenty. It's the woman that carries the gene for the multiple births. It's the woman <laughs> that carries the, the gene. So yeah. before you fuck somebody, you should be like, "Are there twins in your family?" <laughs> <laughs> No, but we got quadruplets. Yeah. <laughs> and then don't fuck her. If she says quadruplets, they're like, you know, I had a nice time. Yeah, yeah. Nice. See you good, later. Good <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Anyway, but so... Uh, it wasn't in my family, so to me it was like, I, I hit the jackpot, apparently. I was like a lottery winner. Oh, yeah, big time. I mean, they were in my family, like, down the line, but not, like, close, you know? Right. But maybe I did have a little bit of a treat. <laughs> I think that was just a fluke. That was just a lucky statistic. <laughs> uh, just remember, you know, Moose was a was a, was a a nimble thing. She she could work her way around that I'm car. Oh, good. I, was, I could still dance. Yeah. So, you know, that's me. I'm good, you know? She's good. She's flexible. My kids say I dance the monkey dance. That's because I use my arms. <laughs> like, a lot of people, when they go to the bar, they only use their legs. They don't use their, above their waist. Like, they don't use their hands or their arms. And it's like, dude, you guys are, are wasting half of dancing by using only your legs. Like, dancing involves your whole body, not just half of it. You know, I just want to, like, go up to people and go, dance right. <laughs> oh, God. Damn it! Dance fucking right. Put your whole body into it. That's just your fucking lower half. Get into it. It's about your whole body. That's just about one part of your body. You know? It just freaks me out because for me, music is a catalyst. If it weren't for the music, I wouldn't be a dancer. There wouldn't be nothing to do without music. I wouldn't be able to dance without music. So. To me, they go hand in hand. Well, you yeah, know, it kind of helps to have music for dancing, yeah. And I've always been exposed to music ever since I was born. Like, I was born in 66, so, like, all the awesome Vietnam-era songs were playing, and so I heard those in my subconscious, right? Sure. And then I took dance lessons. I was in ballet when I was young. <laughs> and I went to the Minnesota School of Ballet, so, like, one little... A little blip in time, but right. I was—I've I, always liked dancing ever and music ever since I was born. Yeah, hell yeah. Oh, yeah. So, if it's you know, to me, it's what I'm supposed to fucking do. Absolutely. You know, <laughs> I mean, that's why I'm here. The yeah, it is probably that's a big part of it. That yeah. is why I am fucking here. So she was put on this earth to dance. It is suck it. <laughs> I'm here. I'm here for a fucking reason. Damn right. Exactly. Well, you know, we all are. We just don't know what it is. Yeah, but I, I know that's part of it. I mean, I'm not saying that's the only reason I'm here. Like, obviously, I'm a mother. I gave birth to two kids and I was 18 now. Oh, yeah, mother. Mother's Day coming up. Yeah, you got Mother's... supposed to happen... You got Mother's Day on Sunday, so... I mean, if it wasn't supposed to happen, it wouldn't have happened. You know? So, happy Mother's Day to all you mothers yeah. out there. <laughs> Thank you, Grandmother. Thank you. Thank you. Every Happy Mother's Day, every all of you mothers out there. That's right. All of you. Even that if you're means, a male mother or that, an animal mother. And, and that means you too, Vinny. The animal mother is just as much of a mother as any other mother. And, you know, fur babies are, are our babies, you know. So, Happy Mother's Day to all mothers. I mean, every mother out there. Yeah, that's a it's a different dance step, Vinny. It's called the uh, horizontal mambo. No, yeah, that. Oh, yeah, we know what that means, man. <laughs> and so, like, the, I tried to like this new, this new dance move, like it's called the two, the kind of floss or something, the floss. I tried to do it. The boys just laughed their asses off. They're like, Mom, no, you don't get it. You know, they're like, No, you 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 don't know what you're doing. <laughs> I tried to recreate this, and it cracked them up. So I'm glad, I'm happy that I could provide the comic release at this point. Like, that's what I'm down to now. I'm, after 18 years, I'm like, they're comic release now. 
You know what I mean? Sure. It's like, okay, great. Does all that work? All that water needs to become this. Yeah, well, okay, wonderful. See, wonderful. Well, uh, now let me, let me, let me. I wiped your poopy asses. Let me, and it comes to this. It's like, okay, great. Okay, I get it now. It is a thankless job. You know, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, um, what was I going to ask you? Oh. Now, do, are you allowed to bring your dog to a festival? Some festivals are dogs are allowed, but some no, no right. pets allowed. I was just wondering because you know. I you, know, but. You you want a you want a good traveling dog that. Yes, I've already told Zach that I said the next dog I get has to be able to travel with me, but and, not to every festival. But it has to be able to be good at the kennel too. I have to board them. Oh, well, right, and, and here. here's the thing. If the boys are off at school or wherever, you know, if they move out, right. who knows? I, uh, about this I know. I'm not, I'm not a 13-year-old getting my first dog. I'm glad I'm glad to know that. I know what's in jail. I'm a dog. <laughs> and although I do want to, yes, I do want a very social dog because we got Marty from the Pain Society, and he was definitely abused. I mean... Obviously, he was abused because his owners, quote unquote, first owners, threw him in a Walmart dumpster. Yeah. That's pretty fucking bad. That takes an evil person to do that, okay? It does. So that means that he had a terrible upbringing before right. we had him. Yeah, there's you know, a lot of a lot of abused animals out there, no doubt about yeah, that. Yeah, you know, and I felt so bad for him. And he was just the most awesome dog. He just adored us, dude. He was just so thankful to be rescued because when we first got him, he had a fucking cold. Like he had, he was shivering. Yeah. And he was underweight. Well, a lot a lot of those dogs, you, you know, know, they wind up. Uh, with all kinds of various diseases, and they get the fleas all over them, and, right. and, and it makes them really that, sick. But he was just, oh my God, he was, you could tell he was a, an abused dog. Yeah. And I just fucking, oh my God, we just fell, he just, we fell in love with him, and he fell in love with us. I mean, he just adored us, dude. Yeah. He did. He was so thankful and grateful. And then he still, even Matt said the other day, he never really totally trusted people, which I, that's because he was abused. Sure. He never really totally 100% trusted people, which I didn't blame him. I don't trust people. I mean... <laughs> Wait, do, you, know? do, you, do you trust people? <laughs> no, that's what I said. I'm like, I don't want to 100% trust people. Well, like, no. I don't blame them. You know, and I was always just tell them, dude, I don't blame you, man. I don't blame you for not trusting people. I told him that all the time. Yeah. You know? Trust them, people get you in trouble. Yeah, I mean... But at the same time, I just love having a dog around me because they're so good and they're so loyal and they are like your little fucking uh, alarm system. You know what I mean? What? Like oh, they wait, have wait, wait. Alarm Somebody's uh, free and slave said stream drop? No, I don't think so. No, they have very good hearing. They have very good sense of smell. Like, one time, Marty freaked out. I told the story when it happened. I told the story I figured about a couple, three years ago. Right. Like, one of the boys put the gas tank in the porch. And I'm like, you got to get that out of here. You know what I mean? Because they let it sit there for, like, one day. Right. And so, like, it, some of the fumes got into the porch. You know? Yeah. And so I let Marty out one day, and he was just like, his nose was right up in there. He's just like, so stiffen, stiffen. And he, I'm like, it's okay, buddy. It's okay. You know, and he was just freaking out because he smelled that gas and he knew that wasn't right. Yeah. That was a normal smell. And I was just like amazed. I mean, dogs have the best sense of smell. It's, and sight. Better sight than, than humans, really. Because they see them in black and white. Dogs do not see color. You knew that, right? Right. Yeah, they only see in black and white. So they're very observant. Like, they have the same eyesight in the day as they do at the night. You know what I mean? Sure. And so dogs are just incredible, incredible creatures. I've always been. A tr I've always wanted to have a dog by me. Always. 
yeah. you know, and I miss having a dog around me. You know what I mean? Right. But I had to give myself time to fucking grieve and get over my dog that was like my best fucking friend. You know? <laughs> yeah. And so, but I do love rescuing, rescuing animals. That's my, one of my passions. Sure, so. sure. All right, let's play some more music. Let's do that. And uh, uh, I hope you guys are having fun. It is a freaky Friday. Ew. Here we are once again. You know, just chilling. All right. This, uh, this first track here from a, a, a band you probably never heard of, but it was it was a great they were a great band. I I, I had a couple albums by them. They're called Moxie. <laughs> Oh yeah, Carlos Espinado, uh, Santana, Carlos Santana. There um, it is. Uh, who? What? Somebody wants to link to that to that video? All right, all right, all right. <laughs> yeah, check out the price at uh, nineteen sixty nine at Dodge Super B, ninety one thousand dollars. Anyway, <laughs> before that we had. Uh, uh, who are these people? Thunder and Rain is the name of the band, doing a bluegrass cover of uh, Sweet Child O' oh, Mine. That was sweet. That was awesome. It was. And we kicked it off with Moxie, Riding High. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. All good songs. All good songs. As per usual. Yeah, I'm but, did, did, did you see the, the, the price on that Super B? No, I did not. I didn't click it because we were... On air, and I'm like, okay. $91,500. Oh, my, really? Come on. It's a classic. It is. There's probably not many out there. And it is <laughs> mint condition. I mean, I didn't look at it. I'll, I'll click on it right now. Yeah, no, it's a beauty. It's a beauty. No doubt about it. But, okay. uh, I want to see it. I want to see it. That's, that's like uh, 10 times more than it was brand new. <laughs> oh, yeah, 10 times. If my dad had a 69 fucking Camaro, dude. <laughs> He did. Uh, oh, yeah, well, those you know are great. You know what we traded in for, though, Grim? What? Gran Torino Station Wagon. The good old oh. Ford Gran Torino. Okay, okay. I think ours was green. All right. The Station Wagon with those seats in the back, you know, that popped up? Sure. The way back? That was actually the coolest place to sit. I had a, what was it? it was because a, you could, like, see the, the cars behind you and shit. You know what I mean? It was so awesome. It was awesome. Like, the parents didn't take that, you know? They were just like, oh, that's extra seating back there. No, but as a kid, you wanted to sit back there. Oh, sure. And sometimes you wanted to sit in the back because it would pop up, like, fold up these seats. They were totally uncomfortable as hell. You know, but you wanted to sit right there. Cause you just wanted to do it. You wanted to, like, do the peace sign out the window and shit. Right. You know, stick your tongue out. <laughs> 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 yeah, but we were kids. We were kids, okay? I wouldn't do this as an adult. Maybe in some circumstances, but, you know, I was a kid. That's what kids do. Uh, yeah, kids right. Do stuff like that. Yeah, no. It's I... not abnormal. Like, I wasn't abnormal. I was a normal kid. Sure. Totally normal. Like, quote-unquote, I put that in quotes loosely, you know. <laughs> but I was like, a, I, like, I went to school, I wasn't, like, put in a rubber room or anything, you know what I mean? Like, so to me, you know, it was the 60s, you know, it was the 60s and 70s and 80s, so, you know, right. do your math, but, you yeah, know. Yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, I'm a, you know, we all went through our shit, you know. Right. I mean, we've all been through this. I, you know, I, the, I had a, the, I had a, I had a Ford station wagon once. Really? Yeah. Was it a Torino? Oh, uh, it was a country something or the other. Ooh, what, oh, yeah, that was after they came, they got rid of the Grand Torino and they made it into that one. Yeah, it, it had a fucking three ninety in it. Huge <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! You could probably race that thing in the fucking track. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you me, really? Yeah, oh yeah. Was, that, that thing was built to go. <laughs> yeah, that, that thing was built to go, ain't no doubt about it. Was it a regular size station wagon, like a full size? Yeah, full like, size, full size family station wagon. Oh my god, 
you have? How old are you? I don't you know. I bought it for like three hundred dollars or whatever. I was probably <laughs> I was probably seventeen. I don't know. Wow, a seventeen year old that size engine. Oh my god. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I, bought, I bought that to drive out to Utah one year. What did you do with it? Oh, like, did you drive it around? Like, did you, like, totally burn it out? Did you, like, totally do, like, skid up, skids and shit? Brake stands uh, No, not stuff? too much. Not too much in that one. Okay. No, 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 not too much in that one. But, but like, it, it, like, it, it got like on down the road, that was for sure. <laughs> yeah, Free Enslaved had a Free Enslaved had a 454 in his station wagon. <laughs> God dang. Oh my God, that's way too big. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, People well, should, yeah. That should be a thing, Graham. We should bring back station wagon racing. And like they sure. should them like you did back in the 70s. Yeah. Would that be cool? Yeah. The well, you know. It would be, except, you know, gas was like 50 cents back then. No, but, no, you're only doing short track, though. You know what I mean? <laughs> short track. You know, like, they use the, the short track ones, you know what I mean? Yeah, oh, yeah. Like, bring back, recreate the, the fucking um, body style from the 70s, and put, these fucking, and put the same engines in them and shit, make sure. them, oh, that would be fucking funny. <laughs> I knew a, I knew a, I knew a guy that had dropped a, a Chevy 350 into a Pinto. <laughs> I was just thinking Pinto. Oh my god, that's awesome! I can't believe you said Pinto. Like I was just thinking, we should have like recreate Pintos. Like get the old Pinto bodies and put these like the same. Oh yeah, all yeah sure. Pieces. That would be so fun. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, that I did. So get a Pinto and a Vega and a. Right, right. AMC, a, a Pinto little Vega. piece of crap. What? Uh, a Pinto versus a Vega. No, I my mean, Pintos Pinto. came with V8s. Come on now. Okay, all right. So only a Pinto strictly only. <laughs> like, that would be so uh, cool to like, bring back cars from the 60s and 70s and have races. Hell like, yeah. Race. You know, oh, that would be so fucking really cool. Okay. All right, Vinny. Uh, someone sleep well. someone that hears this right now. It's gonna become a fucking millionaire. Sure. Because they're gonna they're gonna do this idea that we just suggested. Pretty soon you're gonna see this. Pretty soon, you never know. It could happen. I, I, I could I would want to do it, but I have no connections like at all. All right, well, Vinny, before you go, I got I got to tell you this story here, Vinny. Before I before you go, because <laughs> oh, he's going to bed. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, man. Because uh, this this could this could pertain directly to you, and uh, you know I, I just want you to be careful out there. Uh, so uh, here it is from HackRead. dot com. Spyware uses malicious adult games to infect Android and Windows devices. And I know you're on that phone a lot. So if you're out there and you're playing some kind of adult uh, game, uh, you you don't want to uh, you want to be careful. Says it looks like the spyware developers are fans of popular porn star Mia Khalifa. <laughs> Researchers at security fir firm Trend Micro have identified a dangerous new spyware that is being distributed via adult games, dubbed as Make Spy Spyware. The main target of the malicious new campaign are Android and Windows users. The primary objective of this campaign is to steal your sensitive personal data. According to the blog post from Trend Micro, MakeSpy is the multi-platform spyware that has been named after MakeSpy, the famous adult film actress in America. Never heard of her. Uh, it has been active since 2016. So when you're out there vi uh, visiting your uh, your various porn sites, Vincent, um, <laughs> just <laughs> make sure you got your... Uh, your your computer's condoms are fully intact. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I had to get that for a ready laugh because, you know. Some 
lucky wait, I, I year old. I did, wouldn't go there. I would not go there at your age. Wait, did, like, did, did, didn't Vinny... At my age, I wouldn't go there. Didn't Vinny say he's got a kid? Yeah, but it's a, he's an adult now. You don't want to start over. No, like, all these, all these old guys that hook up with these young, younger women, it's like, you realize you could get them pregnant, right? Right. You know, you're going to be getting bad when you're fucking 90. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on. No, I get it. You know, wanting to procreate and shit, but, you know well, what? Well, this, this, is, this is just a game. It's just a game. It's yes. some adult game called Virtual Girlfriend. Uh, oh my god, it's so horrible. And it's being used this to distribute the, the spyware. Um, yeah. and, oh, where's Goober? I, he's, he's suspiciously missing right now. Yeah, where is that? I mean, he would love this stuff. He would, like, he would love this AI stuff. You know, I mean, I'm sorry, but I'm a human being. That's how I was intended to be right now. You know, where I, I know what I am really. This is just like my meat suit, like Grammy calls it. Uh-huh. It is. It is. It's a meat suit. It is. You know, it is. Your your soul, your being, is not your human oh. persona. You know, the, the, Goober's been, oh. been gone for over two days. He could have well been abducted. He could have been. Yeah. You know, he's talking about spaceships See? all the time. They're like, hey. Let's pick up this dude. He seems to be pro spaceship. Apparently, Anti Hen has not been abducted though, because he's here. We can question him. We can probe him. <laughs> I hope we don't do that. I, I really don't want that for him. I, I don't want you know. Yeah. No, I'm probing. No. <laughs> probing. <laughs> the, probing in general. <laughs> yeah, yeah, be, be careful, no talk, probing. careful talking about probing around virtual girlfriends. <laughs> <Right. laughs> Oh, oh man! Now, uh, <laughs> speakers fall. Get used to it. Now, did you not say you had some stories you were going to? Uh... I do. I have a story that I want to share with everybody because this just goes to show what everyone's all afraid of: getting old and all this shit. Gotta, gotta be all healthy. I gotta exercise. I mean, yeah, you gotta exercise every day. I mean, being active is important, and eating healthy as healthy as you can. And smoking weed. I would just recommend that for anybody. Oh, absolutely. You know, anybody. Smoke fucking weed. That's right. Okay, so anyway. Especially you, Hans. You need weed, Hans. Yeah, he he could benefit, definitely. I, oh. I agree, Grim. I agree. So here's <laughs> this guy. He turned 112 today, May 11th, 2018. And he enjoys life, he drinks, he smokes. He's a kick-ass man here. Yeah. Secret to longevity, just keep living. Don't die. Well, there you go. There you go. Just keep fucking living. <laughs> you know? I mean, come on. He's a veteran. You know, he's served in the South Pacific. He's a, Viet- he's a World War II vet, for crying out loud. Yeah. You know, come on, people. Oh, now see, yeah, I can, I can believe. Ass. Richard Overton, you rock, man. I love you. I love yeah. you, Richard Overton. Yeah. I do. You smoke and you drink. And you're, and you're 112 years old. <laughs> yeah, see, uh, free. I can believe a Vega with a V8 in it. They just confirmed that a little blurb started playing that said he's the oldest confirmed World War II veteran. So more power to you, Richard Overton. You're a good dude. I had a Maverick with the V8. <laughs> what? And thank you for telling it how it is. Just live life. Don't die. That's awesome. That that is awesome. <laughs> yeah. I like it. Okay, sure. so I have another one. I think. Yeah. Yeah, I had a Maverick with a V8. I never had a Vega though. I remember those Mavericks. I remember them. Yeah. Till the floorboards rusted out. And <laughs> 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 it, was, it was a total piece of shit, but it could get okay, down the road. This is, this is bullshit. I'm just gonna, I, I want to talk about this. I All do. right. Like, I bookmarked this earlier. Like, this is bull fucking shit. All right. And I'm 
pissed. I mean, I get it. It's Georgia. And it's all about these good old boys and all this fucking horrific horse shit, racist shit. The good old boy network down in the south. You know, this is a 65-year-old fucking woman that did nothing wrong. Oh, yeah. I, I... Treat her like this. Right. And, and I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. When I watched this, I was pissed. I was yelling at them. I was like, if that was her, I would have fucking taken off. They had nothing to hold her there. They were taking advantage of her because of her age and her ignorance of the law. But she was doing the right thing. She was asking for a supervisor. Right. And th this went on for way too long. This was over a minor fucking thing. Okay? And to me, this is total fucking bullshit. Six pigs. It's, it's Six. ridiculous. But no, it was one cop for a while. And then when, she, when he started pulling her out of the car, he had called in shortly before that. And that's when they started showing up. But he, it was just him and her for a long time. And Ooh, then no, like he ones. called for backup. Because what happened is she, he said she was speeding or something. Or she did some violation. And he wanted her to sign a piece of paper. And she's like, no. Because that's a, that's a, you know, that, that says I'm guilty then. That I agree to being guilty. Right. You know, which I agree with that. I wouldn't want to sign it there. You shouldn't have to sign anything after at the, that point, they give you a ticket. I've never had any officer ask me to sign something. You have to sign a ticket. Really? Yeah, the ticket's just a notice to appear. It's, it doesn't mean you agree with what's written okay. on the ticket. She refuses to sign that, because that's what he had a problem with. You know? Right. Which she didn't know the law. She's 65, apparently, then. Yeah. I mean... That, that, all, that, all that ticket says is... This is what the pig thinks you did. You're going to sign down here. It don't mean that you agree with what the pig thinks, but this is saying that you will go go he, appear in court or, or pay right. the fine, one of the two. He could have said that, but he didn't. He was being a total dick. And yeah. plus, she's 65. She, right. He already told her that she's got to appear in court, which she does regardless if she signs that or not, right? He could have well, said but, easy. But, 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 she's 65 years but, old. But supposedly, the, the signal... Total dick. And do what he did. No, he didn't have to escalate it further. The cop is the one that escalated this incident. No, absolutely. The cop was definitely at fault. Yeah. I watched it too. And, yes. uh, and the, the cop was definitely being a dickhead. It's total bullshit. She's 65. She's going to show up in court. You know what I mean? Yeah. She's guilty. She's going to agree to it. But you don't have to fucking harass her to the point where you have other cops showing up. This is bullshit. Okay, this is over above and beyond what needed to happen. Is what my point is. Oh this wait, is way way beyond what needed to happen. Way beyond. But but they will. T I mean, if you don't sign their if you if you don't sign their paper, they'll they'll grab you. Right, and that's exactly what happened. And she tried to protest and stuff. But if I was that, if, let's just say I was that cop. I, for one thing, I could never be a cop because I could never be that uncompassionate. You know, I could never fuck with a 65-year-old person in that way for doing nothing. Unless they were really speeding. I'd be like, watch your speed. You know, I mean, they just take it to another level. Right. And it, it was a black woman, I believe, and a white cop. Which right. doesn't matter, because to me it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Well, it doesn't make no difference. Use that, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's just, oh. I was pissed when I watched that. I don't know. Were you? Oh, absolutely. But, you know, I'm just so typical, you know. I, 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 I'm, I'm uh, numb to it, I guess, at this point. Yeah, it's like you get to that point, and I <laughs> hate that because, like, well, I'm not numb to it now, I know. Because I actually felt an emotional reaction to that. See? You know what I mean? So I'm not numb. It's just story after story every day about right. cops being like, assholes. and Right. And like we said before so many times on the show, we could do a show with one topic and one topic only, and that would be this, police brutality or whatever. Right. But we can't, we don't want to make it that, because no, that would be too fucking depressing. You know, it wouldn't be fun. 
wouldn't it be a fun show to do that show, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and that'd be the only topic. You know, we that's what we do. Like, we, we're trying to unwind from the week, and then we try to decipher all the bullshit from the week, you know, all the, go through the news or whatever, or find story, you know, all this, we just do this reason. I, I started doing it basically to unwind. I mean, I was, my kids were younger, so I was always here on a Friday night sitting here anyway, you know. Yeah. Unless I had something going on, I, I've been here, you know. That might change soon, but we shall see. We shall see, indeed. Yes. Freedom Slave says, what's, so what's her recourse? Um, nothing. She's going to have to pay. That's, yeah, that, that's her, pay, That's probably. her recourse. Uh, yeah. And it's lame. It's, it's bullshit. It should have never happened. It should have went down the way it did. That's just my point. It's yeah. like, come on. Have some compassion. She's an older woman. She might have been speeding. But, you know, if it's her first offense or whatever, come on. You know, because you know they run their license plate, or their, their fucking driver's license number and everything. Oh, yeah. They looked that up. I mean, she had no prior offenses, I'm sure. Maybe if she did, she did. I think, I it's, I think it said in the article she didn't have anything. Okay, so she didn't have anything. So why are you harassing this person, this 65-year-old woman, to the point that you're making calling a backup? You know, <laughs> the cop escalated it. The cop kept it going. They always she, do. She, yeah. They always do. Like, no, it's just let her go. Yeah. Just fuck it. Fuck it. It's not a huge deal. It's not like she murdered somebody. Come on. No. You know, I mean, really? Why are they going to escalate it to the That's what I have a problem with. That's my main deal. You know, it's just like they're out of control. They are. They just keep escalating and pushing people. Because he definitely pushed her in that situation. He pushed her in that situation. Oh, sure. You know? Sure. He escalated it to the point that it got to that. No, no question. Know? No question about it. Ugh. I know. I know. It's frustrating. It is. And it's just like, you know what? I gotta just... I can't... I pay attention, but like... I can't spend my whole life fucking. I still have to, I, I've learned a long time ago that I can't save people. Like I can't help people unless they want it. You know. I mean, I'll always help somebody in distress or an animal in distress, if, however I can, if it's an emergency. But if it's not an emergency, I'm not going to be readily available for you. Right. You know, I have to take care of myself on my own. I have to think for myself. It's a crazy fucking time right now. Yeah, Free, Free and Slave says she does not have to pay. She was not involved in commerce. Here's the, yeah, here's, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. When they, they come up to your window and they ask you for your driver's license, and you right. pull it out of your wallet and you hand it to them, you yep. have at that point admitted you are a driver of exactly. that vehicle. Um, so you've already... Bent Agreed. your you your, already submitted. Yeah, submitted. It, I mean, it was it was of course it's done via deception, but right. but either way, you've already That's said it doesn't matter. I'm doesn't part matter of I'm part happens. of your game. Here's my driver's right. license. So, yeah, she's she's gonna have to pay. <laughs> I know I, I know technically, realistically, and if you read right. the the law of, uh, via the legalese and you phrase things properly to get around their goofy rules, so then of they're course... They're going to arrest you and haul you in. They're going to manhandle you until they get you in custody, and then you'll have to sort it out later with your lawyer or whatever. Yeah, or at least with the judge. I mean, it's, it's, it's an infraction. There shouldn't be a lawyer involved. Right, exactly. But, um, yeah. Uh, well, I you mean, know, and then once right. uh, they, they put her there and they, and they say, do you understand? It's, and then they've got her. How the we cops think. don't know. The cops really don't cops know. Don't think how we think. They don't know. No, they, they, they don't know. If you if you sit there and go, yeah, well, I have a right to do this because travel here with auto license because I am not doing this for commerce. They'll look at you and they'll say, get the fuck out of my out of the car. <laughs> yeah. You know, they won't fuck around. They'll be like, what the fuck are you talking about? What kind of drug do you on? They don't you, um... tell you. 
They're not going to buy it. Yeah. They, right. The car's registration, it, of course, that means it you belongs. You registered through the state. You got yeah. a state license. All, all, all of that ID. stuff. All, all of that legalistic yeah. crap, you know, uh, put, yep. puts you into their game. So. The only way you could get out of it is if, is if you didn't have a state license, a driver's license. Or, oh yeah, right. or, and you never registered your car. Right, and, and your uh, car wasn't registered. But you, so you'd be, luck, you'd be, you'd be, an unregistered car. You, you'd be so continually hassled on that, what? you know. <laughs> Drive around the unregistered car yeah, you, for a you while. might as well just you walk. You can get pulled over. Yeah, you might, might, might as well just walk at that point. <laughs> right, <laughs> get rid of your car if you don't want to be hassled traveling. Yeah, I'm surprised they don't, you know, make you get a registration for your feet. Exactly. <laughs> don't say that. Don't give them ideas for them. God damn it. Don't do that. Now listen. Oh God. Uh, all right. We're we're gonna get we're gonna get a little lesson on life here. All right. Let's do that. It's we a very good great. lesson uh, that that you should all know. You got to pay pay close attention to this this first video. All right. It's what guy, is it? It's a it's a guy named uh, Miller talking to uh, a guy named Otto. Okay. <laughs> Let's hear it. He's explain, it he's, he, he will explain to you the cosmic unconsciousness. All right. Here you go. From Repo Man. A lot of people don't realize what's really going on. They view life as a bunch of unconnected incidents and things. They don't realize that there's this, like, lattice of coincidence that lays on top of everything. Yep, that's the title track off that new CD here. Pert Near Sandstone. From back in 2012 on 420. <laughs> Doing Appalachian Girl for the Moose Girl there. Uh, before that, we had the Adams family uh, doing doing some dancing, fancy dancing there. To the Ramones Blitzkrieg Bop. Uh, before that, brand new one from In This Moment. Uh, Black Wedding with Rob Halford <laughs> standing in uh, dressed as a priest, but also saying, uh, yeah, Rob Halford from Judas Priest dressed as a priest. And we kicked it off there with uh, some explanation of the cosmic unconsciousness and how time travel, uh, how, how fl <laughs> UFOs are actually time machines. And, uh, That's what I heard. And the thing, the thing you got to remember there, maybe the most important bit on, on that, is that if you drive too much, the less, the more you drive, the less intelligent you are. <laughs> really? No. <laughs> the more you no. drive, the less intelligent you are. You're not going to convince people of that. <laughs> Well, no. you know, yeah, you, you just just take in, take into uh, consideration there uh, some of uh, what was going on there uh, in, in that in that video. Then you'll understand that. Um, yeah, that's true. It's all true. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you for giving us a glimpse into our future, Graham. Your future, your past, it's all the same thing. There's the no, present. There's, there's no there's no such thing as time. All interconnected. At all times, all interconnected. Like, all my past lives are converging right now. Like, what you're saying? Yeah, t time time doesn't actually exist. But I have past lives, though. I've been here before as another uh, person. And that's great. You have to have, well, time time works in the construct under how we live now. But uh, for, I agree. <laughs> But in reality, when you're outside of this three-dimensional right. thing that we live in, then there's there's no such thing as time. As what? As time. Right. I agree with that. I do agree with that. Yeah. So we're on the same page that way. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure, we are. So when you... Ah, I don't want to go here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we, I think we're on the same wavelength for the most part in our ways of thinking of how it is, things are. Right. So I don't want to, like, you're, you're just a make, little, make people you're, think that we're, like, adversaries. No, 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 no we're, we're, we're definitely not. You're, you're just a little more uh, 
uh, stuck in the, uh, well, more in this, more, more, more in, in the universal box. Yes. <laughs> I, would agree. I would agree. I would agree with that. Yeah. yeah so. <laughs> so I'm, we're on the same page pretty much. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. And, and the thing is, you can you can go in any direction you want with it, really. Um, right, you can. That's the beauty of it, you know, really. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's part of it. Sure. Yep, for sure. I'll definitely, I'll definitely uh, put put that in the into the box. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I guess what it comes down for to me is just enjoying this time that I have and not like sometimes I'm just like okay I'm not going to think anything I'm just going to live this moment you know what I mean sure I'm just going to fucking just be here in the moment and just this is what it is it's an awesome moment and I'm going to fucking <clears throat> you know enjoy it the best that I can you know <clears throat> right even if it's not like I don't know what I'm saying. You know what I mean? It's so hard to imagine, like, you're here, but you're not here in a way. You know what I mean? Sure, sure. I mean, it's just, like, really weird. You know? Yeah, it is really weird. I mean, and I think a lot of people aren't in touch with this part of themselves, so they have no idea what we're fucking talking about right now. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> You know? Here, let's just do something they they can relate to. Okay. Here. Um, police facial recognition technology wrongly identifies 2,000 people as criminals. Imagine that. Here we go again. Another cop story. Oh, wonderful. The Welsh police, those from Wales, you know. Um, yes. Uh, police force has the defended its use of facial recognition technology after it was revealed more than 2,000 people were wrongly identified during the 2017 Champions League final. I think that's a soccer thing. Looks like it. I don't know. Anyway, whatever. Um, the technology scans uh, faces in a crowd and compares them against a database of custody images, people that were previously known to be criminals. As 170,000 people arrived in the Welsh capital for the football match, they call it football, uh, between Real Madrid and Juventus, 2,470 potential matches were identified. However, according to the uh, data on the forces website, 92% of those, 2,297, were found to be false positives. <laughs> so... so <laughs> South Wales police began trialing the uh, the technology oh uh, in June last year when an attempt to catch more criminals. And instead, they they just catch you and I uh, right. going, going to a football foosball doing nothing, game. doing nothing wrong at all. Okay, South Wales police admitted that no facial recognition system is 100% oh, yeah. accurate. Well, since yours is only 8% accurate, I'm going to have to agree with you on that. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, uh, no, <laughs> it's, it also said, uh, no one has been arrested after an incorrect match. Um, still, they did recognize them as criminals, even though they certainly were not. Um, <laughs> Of course, maybe they were. Who knows? They're they're, they're football hooligans. Their definition of criminal is way different than our definition. They're, they're soccer hooligans, so. Uh, oh, yeah, hooligans! Yeah. Oh yeah, they yeah. like soccer. They're hooligans. They are. They are. I know. Just like hockey people. <laughs> hockey people are fucking hooligans. They are. I, I'm That's not gonna. Why. I'm not. I'm not gonna disagree with that. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I got I got a couple of Israeli stories here for you. Oh God, Israel! Israel. Yes. Israel. This first one from yes. from the Electronic Intifada. Israeli police teach school children how to shoot Palestinians. 
Hey, what would you learn in school today? Oh, I learned how to kill people. What? Yeah. That's right. Israeli Israeli police Israeli police planned to teach how to shoot Palestinians as part of a training exercise at school. The incident at Manasha Regional Council near Haifa, uh, northern present-day Israel, was brought stolen land, which is considered present-day Israel, uh, brought to light in recent days when the Palestinian citizens of Israel took photos of what was happening. Jamal Zakala, a member of the Israeli parliament and from the Joint Arab List, is demanding an investigation into the training sponsored by Israeli police and the Education Ministry, which uh, the propagation, Propaganda Ministry, uh, which he said prepares students to psychologically kill Arabs. One photo shows a person, most of the body blurred with a black marker, using a paintball gun to fire at cutouts of men and women wearing checkered, whatever those headscarves are called, um, uh, that are associated with Palestinians. Zakalala um, made his uh, demand in a public, to a public security minister, another guy I can't pronounce, according to the publication Arab 48. The activity in the Menasha Regional Council is part of a widespread trading of children by the Israeli by police in Israeli schools. So you have first off the first problem. Yeah, uh, no, it's not. A, it's just a headscarf. Uh, it's not called the burqa. The burqa is the whole thing. Um, so I, I, I don't know what you. They, they have a name for it there, but I can't pronounce it. So that's why I didn't. I didn't mention it. <laughs> All right, second story uh, on Israel is not really a, uh, is a it's not really a, it's it's a it's a little uh, uh, what, 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 what you call it a history or a informational lesson here. Israel, I S R A E L. What does the name Israel mean? What the hell? Anyway, they associated here in this article on the Red Thread dot net. Israel is ISIS. Raw and E L E E D and Ili Ili Enil Enlil. Anyway, these these three Egyptian gods is basically what it is. Um, I'll, I'll let you read through the text for yourself, but I found it kind of interesting that uh, that's that's where the uh, the name Israel derives from is, is from these these three Egyptian gods. And wow. for, so for them to claim themselves as the chosen ones, maybe they were. Maybe, uh, you know, maybe these these uh, gods, which are really aliens, of course. No! These gods, which are really aliens, said, hey, you, you, you guys are our... No, no. Yeah, that's the problem. Yeah, no. <laughs> You're our chosen You're folk. delusional. You're our chosen folk. <laughs> yeah, fuck them. Well, they're not. I guarantee you they're not. Oh, God. <laughs> the stories I got are really... They're, they're really... It's they're, fucking crazy shit, dude. They're really... They're, it's, well, it's weird. They're, uh, mostly... Everything's just terrible out there in the world. I know! <laughs> I know. Here's, here's the story I'm from... I'm laughing, but I'm not laughing, really. Here's the story from freebeacon.com. Oh my God! This is crazy shit. White House okay. examining plan to help Irene, Iranian people oppose regime. The scary part about this is this is the stuff they're telling us. What about the stuff they're not? Telling right, us? I know, but here. That's you, the scary part. That's the scary they, part do, right there. Do they really think that you're going to get people that you're bombing and starving to death no. to to help you? No. Anyway, so it says the Trump administration is examining a new plan to help Iranians fighting the hardline. <laughs> They're not What's fighting the against fuck? the fighting the hardline regime in Iran following America's exit from the landmark nuclear deal. What was landmark about that nuclear deal? I, I, I think I missed something. And reimposition of harsh economic sanctions. So right there, they're imposing harsh economic sanctions on the country of Iran and saying, "Hey, why don't you guys help us out? Wait, right. you're just you're starving it's us to the, death. It's you're, like it's what, 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 you're, you're, you're starving us to death, and, and you want our help? Anyway, oh my God. Um, 
so there's a, apparently a three-page white paper being circulated amongst National Security Council officials in the White House, which offers a strategy by which the Trump admin could actively work to assist an already aggravated Iranian public topple the hardline ruling regime. Uh, I, I, <laughs> I, can't, I, can't even, I can't even read it. it it's, it's, just so, it's, it's just so horrible. The, 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 the way, the way these people think that that right. somehow somehow they're gonna they're gonna blame their their own folk for something yeah, that's being they shut the shit up and then they fucking do their shit. It's like a Hollywood fucking movie. We've said this so many times on the show. It's it's a it's a terrible movie at that. Yeah, yes, and it's just so obvious. It's just like come on, people, you have to see this. Now, I don't... You have to see this. I don't know if I've mentioned this story before or not, and this is obviously not the first time this has happened. Um, but here it is from the Daily Beast dot com. Vince McMahon, he's the owner of the WWE, yeah, the World Wrestling E. I don't know what the E is for. Anyway, uh, I don't know. Vince McMahon is pushing anti-Iran propaganda. For Saudi what? Arabia, <laughs> the, the, king, oh. the, the kingdom is paying top dollar for these bouts and getting its money's worth. Saudi Arabia used the men of the oh entertainment that's what they use for of World Wrestling Entertainment, owned by husband of Trump cabinet member Linda McMahon, to put out anti Shiite propaganda. Oh Holy God. Shiite! This, guy, this, guy, this, See, this proves to you this is not freedom of speech. <laughs> This is hate speech, and they're allowing hate speech to happen. That's bullshit. You should not allow hate speech to happen. And they know what goes on in these fucking wrestling people, you know? Right. I'm yeah. sorry, but there's a stereotype about people who attend wrestling matches. The stereotype to the government is they're not too bright. So they're, you're an easy target. They are an easy target. So this propaganda be forced down their throats. You know what I mean? Right. It, 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 uh, well, anyway, apparently crazy. the the, the, the WWE's partnership with the Saudi government for a ten year deal. Yeah, of this is bullshit. This is propaganda. <laughs> of super shows uh, uh, it was already controversial before last uh, to, uh, last Friday's card, dubbed the greatest Royal Rumble. This is how they get people to sign up to go to war for them. Anyway, so apparently they they have a guy dressed as um uh, as a as an Iranian in there fighting against a guy dressed as a Saudi. You don't get to get my kid to go to fucking war for your ass, <laughs> rich fucking prick. Because you made some fucking tool. My kid doesn't get to go there and test it out for you, you bitch. Yeah, and they make and they make all the all, they make all of the the, the 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 fans, you know, how these wrestling people are. They make all the fans boo and yeah. hiss and and, and yell stereotype people and yell like, kill him, kill him, at, at, you know. So wrestling fans are gonna buy into this, uh, gonna obviously. Yeah. So they stereotype you. <laughs> they're, they're pretty easily fooled anyway, though, right? I mean, <laughs> what are you saying, Grant? That they're dumb? Wrestling fans. Yeah. Uh. Well. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And they're playing on that fact that most people that buy into that shit are fucking dumb. Yeah. But that's a stereotype. They shouldn't do that. That me and you should not do that. Well, I, I wouldn't watch wrestling, so. I wouldn't either, and I don't. Yeah. So. You know, I hear you. I mean, it is a fake sport. The the fucking I call it fake wrestling. That's what I call it. I mean, I call it fake wrestling. It's all an act. It's stupid. It's right, dumb. Right. And it appeals to people that are dumb. Okay. Well, tell, tell me what you think of this story. All right. Because it's just an opinion, his opinion, and of course he's trying to sell the product and get more people to come to where he is. We're just gonna put in a hate mail now. We're just gonna hack now. No, 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 no. This is uh, <laughs> the the governor of the state of Washington says 
We've got the best weed. Really? <laughs> oh, come on, buddy. Don't be bragging about your fucking weed. That's lame. That's fucking lame. <laughs> it says, why, Washington... That's lame, though. That's lame. Anyway. The, the governor of the state of Washington is proud of the state's legal marijuana. <laughs> I bet he is. He says, I can honestly say we've got the best weed in the USA. Oh, yeah. Governor Jay Inslee said on Friday night. And he has no idea that that's true. It's a growing industry and well-regulated. See, there, see, there's Duh. the problem right there, well-regulated. Yeah. Anyway, he, I guess he was on Bill Maher's show talking about this. He says, uh, yeah, wouldn't it be wonder wonderful if the first time Donald Trump said something that was actually true, if he said... <laughs> <laughs> if he said he would leave us like alone, the government's going to tell us the truth. Okay, all right. Well, if he if he actually said he would leave you alone about marijuana, don't hold your fucking breath, people. <laughs> Even politics means you're a liar. That's a, yeah. Come on, be uh, real here. Apparently, he said that Trump is preparing to support cannabis reform legislation. So uh, whether or not this guy's telling the truth about that, who knows? But he thinks he thinks Washington's got the best weed. So yeah, well he thinks that in his mind. But <laughs> he's like, Fuck that douche! He doesn't know nothing about weed. No, I'm sure he don't. It looks pretty high. No, in the he pic is, he's just being a dumbass. He looks high he in the picture up though. There and say something. Yeah, we got the best weed. Like really? <laughs> you know. Bad thing to say. He does look high in he does look high in the picture. Fuck you, dumbass. Well you go smoke some and get back to it. Yeah. Then let us know. And travel around and smoke other kinds of weed. Alright, let's hear let's okay. let, yeah. let, let's hear this now. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that there is Highway Jam and uh, their version of Black Betty. Oh, yeah, gotta love that. Anyway, before that, we had The Ventures doing Walk, Don't Run. Previous to that was The Beatles in Strawberry Fields Forever. Nothing is real. Nothing to get up about. Anyway, uh, before that, we had a song um, for Rome's called Middle Class Rut with New Low. Never heard of them. They were all right. Um, interesting, different, something. Uh, anyway, we kicked it off there with a Moose Girl song, or a song for a Moose Girl. Charlie Parr doing cheap wine live at the Terrapin Station. So uh, that, that's, that'll, that'll wrap her up, boys and girls, kitties of all ages. <laughs> oh, they're on Facebook, Stoner Train. Huh? I love Stoner Train. They're a great band. Uh, anyway. Oh, pot. Yeah, I couldn't find my headset right away, so I was finding it. All right. I wasn't here. All right. Anyway, thank you for playing that Charlie song. It was amazing. He played that last weekend. I was so touched. I was so happy. Yeah. And thank you for playing it again, because I will never tire of the song. Well, great. Ever. We got plenty of other Charlie Parr in the list. Yeah, so. we do. I'm sure you do. <laughs> so anyway, thank you, everyone, for tuning in to Figures Ball once again. Absolutely, we'll be. Well, no, wait, 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 wait. We we will not be back next Friday. No, I won't be here next Friday. Moose I Girl's not. So next Friday. Moose no. Girl's not going to be here next Friday, so I am going to take the week off. So there'll be no. Right. There'll be no, nothing next Friday. So there'll be no, no freakers ball. Yourself. No freakers ball next week. Sorry, folks. Send for next weekend. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, but there will be tomorrow, uh, Grammy's Rocket Chair. So, so, oh, yeah. don't mi I mean, not Grammy's Rocket Chair, it's the oh, dark, no, dark Table. Don't miss that. Uh, it's, it's always dark a fun table. show. Uh, Flash and Grammy at noon Eastern tomorrow. And I'll, I'll be on Wednesday with the Blues, so, um, and, and doing the trivia here in the chat. Have a good old time right here. Good Wednesday. Yeah, and then you get Hal, and then you get Wednesday. Gary L. Good Wednesday. What? You said Wednesday. No, I said uh, Sunday. Didn't I say Sunday? No, you said Wednesday. Oh, well, I meant Sunday. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Grammy will be on Wednesday. <laughs> wow. Oh, boy. I tell you, sometimes you're just off. Anyway. Uh, I know. I hear you. I, I know, too. All right. That, that's it, folks. Uh, peace. Peace.